Hey guys, today I'm here with a review of The Vegetarian by Han Kang. This was, I believe, originally published in the original Korean in 2007, but last year Hogarth published this edition in the English translation by Deborah Smith. Now, this has already made quite the splash here on booktube. Lots of people were talking about it in 2015, and this has recently been uh, featured on the long list for the Man Booker International Prize. So naturally, when I saw this featured on the Blogging for Books website, I immediately requested a copy to review. I will also be giving away a copy at the end of the video, so if you're interested in that, stick around for the rules. Instead of using a more traditional chapter breakdown, The Vegetarian is split into three parts, and in the first part we meet Yang Hee, who is the main character and is the wife of a man named Mr. Cheong. Now Mr. Cheong really married Young Hee because when he met her she seemed like the most average ordinary woman and for an underachiever like him that seemed pretty darn good. In fact, the only problem he's ever had with his wife is that he is slightly embarrassed by the fact that she doesn't like to wear bras. However, one morning he wakes up to find her standing in front of the, their refrigerator throwing out um, very expensive meat products and when he comes home from work he finds out that not only has she um, discarded every animal product in the house, but she has decided to give up meat altogether. Yang Hee's family also reacts really badly to her decision to become a vegetarian and her father in particular takes some very drastic and violent measures to try and get her to eat meat and be the proper wife that she is supposed to be. In the second part of the book, while Yang Hee's vegetarianism morphs into something darker and um, more closely resembling a sort of mental illness, we also see that she has become the object of her brother-in-law's obsession. And finally, the third section is narrated by Yang Hee's older sister who is struggling to deal with her sister's apparent mental illness and the consequences that that has had on her own life. First off, I definitely have to comment on the writing style of this novel, which is absolutely beautiful and really, really captivating. When I first picked it up, I was reading through some of the blurbs at the beginning of the book, and one of the blurbs mentioned that this was perfect for fans of Haruki Murakami, and having read it now, I would totally agree with that statement. This does have a vaguely Murakami-esque feel to it, and if you like that kind of um, vaguely grotesque and yet kind of dreamlike, almost trance-like uh, quality to literary fiction, I think you'll really, really enjoy this. Although this book does definitely have a very surreal or dreamlike quality to it, there is no actual magic or magical realism going on in here. Um, it's just that ordinary life is described really, really beautifully, and I wanted to share one brief passage with you guys that I think really illustrates that. She shakes the water off her folded umbrella. The floor of the bus is already wet, black, and glistening. It wasn't the kind of rain for which an umbrella could provide sufficient shelter, and so her blouse and trousers are half-soaked. The bus picks up speed, racing along the wet road. She struggles to keep her balance as she walks down the aisle. Finding a double seat where both spaces are unoccupied, she takes the one next to the window. The windows have steamed up, so she gets a tissue out of her bag and wipes a patch clear. She watches the streaks of rain lashing the window with the untouched steadiness unique to those accustomed to solitude. As they reach Masyok, the late June woods begin to unfurl on either side of the road. There is something battening down about the woods in this torrential rain, like a huge animal su suppressing a roar. As it turns up the road to Choksyong Mountain, the road gradually narrows and becomes winding, bringing the wet body of the woods undulating nearer. The base of that mountain over there, might those be the woods where, three months ago, her sister Yang Hee had been found? One by one, the black spaces between the trees, concealed by the shaking canopy of rain-lashed leaves, pass in front of her eyes. She turns away from the window. Now, I did only end up giving this four stars, and that's mainly because of how I felt about the second uh, section in this book, um, which was narrated by Yang Hee's uh, brother-in-law. Now, I do see the importance of that middle section, and I don't think it should have been cut in the slightest. I just am not sure that the brother-in-law was the correct narrator. On kind of a more thematic level, I think this book, for a very short book, this is only um, 188 pages, really deals with a lot of different uh, themes and a lot of different issues. It talks about um, societal expectations, family expectations, um, the idea that life is picked out for you and what um, strength and courage that really takes to take control of your own life, take control of your body, and kind of 
just claim some control over a life that seems really prescribed. Based on some of the reviews I've seen on both uh, Goodreads and the Blogging for Books website, a lot of people were really horrified by um, Young Hee's father's reaction to her going vegetarian and seemed to take this as um, kind of a, a general comment on Korean culture's reaction to vegetarianism. Obviously I can't talk about Korean society in general because I am one, not Korean, and two, don't live in Korea. I just wanted to respond to this as an Asian American and say that in my family, specifically on the Asian side of my family, giving food and sharing food is very much a way of saying I love you. For example, if I haven't seen my grandmother for a while, when I walk in the door she's not gonna smother me in hugs and kisses, but she's gonna ask me, have you eaten yet? Or here, have this snack, or here, let me make you something to eat. This is very much her way of saying I care for you, I love you, let me make sure that you are well taken care of. So although I do think that Young Hee's parents went too far in the book, I can see why they reacted the way they did. In a sense, refusing her parents food or refusing the meat that her parents offer her, Young Hee, it seems like is rejecting their love. And just as a final note, I would offer some trigger warnings for this book, specifically if you are triggered by things like uh, sexual abuse, eating disorders, or mental illness. Um, maybe just be careful because those all uh, play a part in this, but otherwise I think this is an absolutely beautiful book. I think this is something that even though it is really short, um, I will be able to read again and again and get more out of, and I did give this four stars. So like I said, I received this for free as part of the Blogging for Books program in exchange for an honest review, uh, but when they sent me my review copy, they accidentally sent me a second one. So I thought I would give this away to you guys. If you want to be entered into the giveaway, all you have to do is leave a comment either here or on my blog post, whichever you prefer, um, just saying that you would like to be entered in the giveaway and I would love it if you could leave me a recommendation for a work in translation because I've really been enjoying my translated fiction lately and I'm always looking for more recommendations. If you are under 18, um, you can still enter, just make sure you have your parents' permission because I will have to ask for the winner's address in order to send this to them. And with that, that's all I have for today's video, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you're having a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye! Also if you want to comment about what you think of my new haircut, uh, go ahead. I went in with the intention of getting a trim, came out with short hair. So, you know, these things happen.